Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Ocean's 12 from 2004, the sequel, the follow-up to the great heist film Ocean's 11, the remake from three years prior. Uh, a movie that I really enjoyed, a movie that uh, I appreciated far more than the original. Uh, and this one, despite being a clear and present step down from the original or from the remake of Ocean's Eleven, uh, it is still better than the original from 1960. Uh, this one, the whole gang is back, you know, Brad Pitt, George Clooney, uh, Julia Roberts, uh, Andy Garcia, um, Catherine Zeta-Jones is a new addition to this, the cast in this one. Uh, and you get some people, some you know, some of the goons from the original one uh, coming back at the end of Ocean's Eleven. Uh, David Ocean, I think it's David Ocean, right? Yeah, no, Danny Ocean uh, was just being released from prison again uh, after violating his parole. Was the only reason he was back in prison after the events of the first movie. Uh, so this, and then he was being tailed by. Um, terry benedict's two goons uh was how that one ended uh and this one it starts out pretty much uh giving brad pitt a romantic storyline he it kind of goes back in time to brad pitt having this little love affair with uh Catherine zeta jones character uh isabella who is a or isabel who is a uh it, kind of like an investigator somebody who studies uh career criminals uh people like danny ocean and uh who has a fondness for them has a uh a deep respect for the work that they do uh she herself uh her father was uh one of these master criminals as well um and that is why she has this kind of love and admiration despite the fact she's trying to put them behind bars uh, but Brad Pitt has this like romance with her at the beginning where uh, you you kind of see she's on to him. Uh, it's just kind of describing aspects of like evidence that she found that that apply to his character. And he kind of dips out uh, as she's, uh, you know, going to sleep. He, he finds out that she's on to him and he pieces out. Um, that's kind of like a flashback thing. Um we have the oceans, the Tess Ocean and Danny Ocean. Tess is, you know, setting up their new home in this new place. Uh, and when the goons show up, when Terry Benedict's goons show up, and she gives uh, Danny Ocean a heads up, saying that there's a flood in the basement and the pilot lights out. It's a like a, a code for them to say the the heat is around the corner and to drop everything and bounce. Uh, so Benedict is after the ocean gang to try and not only collect his money, which he had already re been reimbursed from his insurance, uh, but he wants the money that they stole back. Uh, in addition uh, to that, he wants uh, it paid in interest. He wants the interest. Uh, so going from $160 million, which was the amount that they stole in the first movie, uh, it brings the total up to like 190 million, somewhere around there, uh, is the total that Terry Benedict wants back. Um, so a lot of this movie is not heist. All of the heist stuff in this movie is really an afterthought. A lot of it is told in flashbacks. It is not, no aspect of this movie oceans 12 is as good as the writing and the heist aspects of the first movie all of the supporting characters are pretty much sidelined in this movie uh they don't really do a whole lot uh, a lot of this movie the failures that happen the quote-unquote failures are actually part of the master plan which you don't see because everything's an afterthought in this you don't see till later so it's a fun movie kind of nowhere near as good as the first one it's like okay it's not horribly bad but it's also not giving me anything like i don't care if brad pitt's character has a romantic interest 
I, it doesn't matter at all. He doesn't have to be. That character character could be gay and probably would make the movie more interesting if Brad Pitt's character was gay instead of just having him have this love affair with Catherine, Catherine Zeta-Jones. The Many Faces is an ongoing abstract ink portrait series that I started many years ago. I release a new face every day. But go to InspiredDisorder.com to check them out. So many available. But as a listener to The Ray Taylor Show, you can save 10% when you use coupon code INSPIRED when you check out. So go to InspiredDisorder.com slash TMF. That stands for The Many Faces. Go check them out. Browse the entire collection. And when you decide on a piece or maybe multiple pieces, make sure you use coupon code INSPIRED when you check out. And you'll save... 10% as a big thank you for checking out my work, for collecting my work, and for listening to The Ray Taylor Show. And with that said, let's get back to the show. But it is what it is. Catherine's great, you know, playing the investigator, hot on their tail. But also when she finds out, she's like, because she's got such an admiration, she wants to know more. Then there's also this other guy called the Night Fox who is in the mix, which is kind of the stupid part where he's like this master criminal who who's like now that Danny Ocean and his crew, they have to pay back Terry Benedict or else um, they're trying to just do some small jobs to try and at least buy themselves some time. But then this Night Fox guy is beating him to it like okay it's just like and then they they show him and it's it's like they never show how he does the thing but somehow he's able to do what like a team of professionals uh can't do or can do but like he does it like in a fraction of the time it it, it's just kind of it's just not as complex not as interesting a little lazy because a lot of this stuff is like they don't have to succeed. They just have to like show a thing where it's like, oh, but they, this is how it all worked out. This is also the movie where Tess plays Julia Roberts. Tess, of course, played by Julia Roberts. There is part of the reality of this movie is that Julia Roberts exists and that Tess looks a lot like her. And nobody wants to bring it up. Obviously not brought up throughout the entire first film. But this one, it's it's kind of this thing of like, you know who she looks like? You know who she looks like? And of course, they get into a spot where only a few of them, like people get busted. People get, you know, got here and there. So that's how a lot of the team gets sidelined because they're just in prison through most of this movie. Uh, so only a few of them become uh, free and able to try and pull off this job to try and get this egg, which is very similar to Red Notice, how they're trying to steal an egg. Red Notice, to go on a tangent, not a good movie, but really borrows from a lot of good movies. I mean, I would say this movie is better than Red Notice. Borrows from a lot of good movies in in order to to put this mishmash of bad acting together. Anyway, enough of Red Notice. Ocean's 12. So they're trying to get this egg, whatever. So they're, they, they put this thing together with holograms. The technology is like slightly more like ridiculous like they invented technology like there's a lot of stuff that's like i don't know whereas the first one felt a lot more plausible it really felt like the writer took the time to make everything fit together in in a a kind of a realistic way that made it work where this one it's just like oh well we need a thing to do this crazy thing so we'll just invent this piece of technology to make it work but so they get the the egg so she plays herself there's a cameo from bruce willis playing himself uh there is a lot of comedy in this movie they took out all the heist stuff and they put in a lot of comedy. So there's definitely a lot of comedy, which I appreciate. And part of that comedy is when Bruce Willis shows up, how like all of these side characters, like there's all of these like little side conversations 
that Bruce Willis is having with people where people are constantly going up to him and telling him that they knew the twist of Sixth Sense before it happened in the movie. And he just has to go along with like, oh, you're so smart. Oh, when did you notice? Oh, okay. Like there's this always this side conversation of Bruce Willis being hit up by all kinds of people uh, in reference to the Sixth Sense, which I appreciated that. That was really funny. I thought that like the fact I'm sure Bruce Willis in real life constantly gets people that are like, I knew the I knew the twist before anybody because people love when there's a twisty movie or a twist happens in a show, people love whether it ha- when it whether it's legitimate or not, people love to talk about the fact that they knew the twist before it happened. Um but yeah, that's kind of funny because I'm sure that's a big part of Bruce Willis's life uh, ever since that movie came out. Um, this is also the movie which the test stuff as Julie Roberts is fun. It's interesting. It's something new. Like you wouldn't expect a movie to do that, but in a movie where the initial premise for the whole franchise, the original movie, was bringing these giant actors together in a ensemble piece. Uh, it kind of makes sense that there would it, it like it, it it's almost meta in a way that there's Julie Tess she's playing herself. Join Inspired Disorder Plus today. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus to join. Membership includes members only discounts and deals. You get access to the Ray Taylor show completely ad free, as well as bonus episodes. You get access to the complete live painting archive. You also get access to every single podcast ever produced by Inspired Disorder, hosted by Ray Taylor. You get access to Ray Taylor's personal blog, as well as the opportunity to ask me any questions. So if you want to start a podcast, you're into art, ask me anything. And so many more things are being added every day to Inspired Disorder Plus so sign up today, become a member, head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspired Disorder Plus member today. But what this movie has that is stupid, that is really bad, aside from the fact that it feels like they fail into success even though everything was supposedly some master plan. It's just like really messy and then it's like, oh, we meant to do that. The one thing that was bad, that was set up. You see this character preparing for this moment. But you just think that it's just how he exercises and stays fit. This guy who plays the Night Fox. How he gets past, like there's this randomized laser hallway that was the big way, like the, the way they didn't know how to get around. So they had to devise a plan to get the egg during the daytime where everything is open to make sure that 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 laser field wasn't there. It had to he 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 does a break dance through the hallway is how he got through. And apparently, like the hallway wasn't random. They said it was random, but it wasn't random because it's clearly he was able to get a breakdancing routine that would take him through. It is stupid. There are a lot of laser hallway scenes in movies, and most of them are not very good. Most of them are bad. I have a, I have a nose hair that's really bugging me right now. Most of them are really bad. This is one of the worst. It is just so cheesy. It is just so bad. But none of that matters because, like, like everything is like this giant misdirect for the audience and the Night Fox because they never had to steal the egg. The thing that the egg that the Night Fox thought he had stolen was already a fake egg. And even when the, the remaining ocean crew get tests to play Julia Roberts in order to get close enough to put the little hologram thing in there. They already knew that they were swapping a hologram for a fake egg. For whatever fake egg the the Night Fox left. 
So that in its, itself was a performance. But you don't find out until the end of this movie where they go through it. It's like, oh, we just stole the egg before it even showed up to the museum. Like, we, we, and we just caused this fight on, like, there's just a random guy who's carrying this egg in a backpack on public transportation with just a couple bodyguards. It's dumb. It's so dumb. It's like, it's, why, if you got the egg right away, why did you go through this whole, whole thing? Everybody gets busted. Everybody gets put. And even all of the people, when the whole crew, when the whole Ocean's crew is in jail, like, the way they get busted out was, like, so stupid. <laughs> like, there's, there's, like, zero accountability to any, any of, like, people could just pretend to be uh, law enforcement, and there's zero questioning. So I didn't really like this movie as much. It wasn't horrible. The worst part was the breakdance hallway laser scene. The overall story was kind of stupid. It's just, like, this ego battle between Danny Ocean and and the Night Fox wasn't that great uh but I'm excited to see where it goes in Ocean's 13 uh I think Ocean's 13 is probably the movie I've seen the least uh so we'll see I'm going to talk about that one next week followed by Ocean's 8 uh to wrap up the entire Ocean's franchise but uh Ocean's 12 eh Eh, I didn't really care. Eh. It's like, I mean, it's not horrible, but it's like, like if Ocean's Eleven from 2001 is up here, and then you have Ocean's Eleven from 1960 down here, I would say Ocean's Twelve, meh, kind of in the middle. Maybe on the lower side. Like if Ocean's Eleven from 2001 is 10 stars, and Ocean's Eleven from 1960 is one star. I would give Ocean's Twelve like a four or a five star. It's like it's like mediocre. You still have the slick stuff. You still have the good banter. A lot of comedy. I enjoyed the comedy. You have um, you have uh, Matt Damon is the still playing the perfect kind of rookie kind of messing things up wanting to do more than he's 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 able to do uh i think that part's great but like the writing is nowhere near as good the story itself is kind of meh. the and the that laser hallway scene is pretty bad um but yeah still not horrible hopefully the the next one is a step up hopefully there's more heisty stuff in the next one which i don't really remember as much uh, so it'll be fun to rewatch that one again. But Ocean's 12 from 2004. Check it out if you want. It does some interesting stuff, but overall not nearly as good. Check out the first one instead. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.